Hey there, YouTube. Welcome. You're with Got That Funk. I'm sorry I'm going to go off on a bit of a rant here, but that's uh, something I haven't done on this channel for quite a while, so I think it's well past time. I have been watching with great concern the uh, unfolding presidential race in the USA. Watching it from a distance, of course, because I do live on the other side of the Atlantic. But um, nevertheless, what I glean from the TV and from the internet and from the newspapers uh, is increasingly depressing. Because, you know, eight or nine months ago when Donald Trump announced his candidacy for the Republican ticket, um, at first everybody laughed because they thought, oh, he's got no chance. You know, he's just going to make a fool of himself. And indeed, he has made a fool of himself. But to everyone's astonishment, him making a fool of himself has actually got him higher polling numbers. He's won three out of four of the primaries that he's fought so far and come in second on the fourth one. So I think um, people are realizing, and uh, not everybody's as upset about it as I am, but people are realizing that Donald Trump could be a serious probability for the nomination for the Republican ticket. And even if Donald Trump doesn't get the nomination, the others are all totally objectionable. The least objectionable of the remaining candidates is John Kasich, and quite honestly, he's got a fucking ice cubes chance in hell of getting through at this point. Even if he could overcome Tr Cruz and um, Rubio, he's never going to overcome Trump. So, <clears throat> what you gonna do, right? We're, we're pretty much almost certainly looking at, unless some like sex scandal comes out involving Donald Trump and the Pope or something like that, I can't imagine what could possibly derail Donald Trump's campaign at this moment. Um, something scandalous would it would have to be like incontrovertibly scandalous uh it couldn't be a matter of opinion you know he'd have you'd have to have like video footage of him murdering a cop or something like that for people to go oh you know what i can't vote for him now because i was reading a um an op-ed in the um independent yesterday a sketch by Mark Steele, who's a comedian and a journalist. And uh, Mark Steele said something that I actually agree with. I mean, Donald Trump could probably get on the fucking stump and say, anyone who votes for me is a moron. You're all total idiots. And people would lap it up and go, well, he speaks the truth. At least he's not being politically correct. He doesn't really care if we like him or not. And then like him because he doesn't care if you like him. What the fuck is going on here, people? What the fuck? Part of me understands why Donald Trump has his appeal. Part of me is like completely vexed that any adult over the age of fucking, you know, even if any, anyone over the age of nine should be able to see that Donald Trump is full of shit as far as I'm concerned. When I was in California in November, I went to dinner with my friend Lance, who I hadn't seen in 25 years. And uh, we were talking politics over uh, curry. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, he mentioned that he was a supporter of Donald Trump. And I'm like, what the fuck, Lance? How could you be so stupid, you know? And he says to me, he says, you know, America needs to be run like a business. We need we need a leader. We need someone who's uh, not part of the political machine. He basically falls for that whole line, man. And Lance makes in the high six figures a year. He's not a dumb guy. He's not, you know, and Trump's his man. And that was a long time ago. That was four months ago, you know? Um... So I, don't, I, I am completely aghast at the possibility of a Trump presidency. And you might think, oh, well, you know, uh, there will be enough people who hate Trump to vote against him. So even if he gets the nomination, you know, Bernie or Hillary will win. Well, I don't think it's that much of a foregone conclusion because I personally believe very strongly, in fact, that if Hillary Clinton is the nominee on the Democratic side of the ticket and the, uh, the other person on the ballot is Trump, Trump will win. Because as I said in my Breakfast Club video about Hillary Clinton back last spring, um, before Trump or Bernie had announced their candidacy, I made a video about Hillary. And I said that uh, my main problem with the prospect of candidate Hillary Clinton is that as many people do admire and like her and support her, she has a huge number of haters. Massive. Hillary Clinton comes with baggage that you can't get rid of with speeches. And I just, I, I really have a bad feeling that there's enough people who really, really, really don't like Hillary. Um, and I don't necessarily think that that number is smaller than the number of people who really, really, really don't like Trump. 
Plus, uh, quite alarmingly, in comment sections on videos all across YouTube uh, talking politics, I have noticed, um, I, like when I watch the debate uh, on YouTube, and I look through the comment section, and the number of people who said that they support Bernie but couldn't bring themselves to vote for Hillary and would end up voting for Trump because they want to vote against the establishment is kind of alarming. And it really shows to me that Trump will pull in independent voters that Hillary can't pull in. Bernie could pull those independent voters in. I mean, Bernie was an independent member of Congress for fucking years. I think he's the longest serving independent member of Congress ever in the history of the USA. So, you know, Bernie Sanders, in my opinion, uh, and it's not just my opinion, polling data backs it up. Uh, Bernie Sanders has a much better shot taking down Trump if Trump is the nomination. It seems to me pretty obvious from a distance anyway uh, that there's a significant number of the electorate, electorate in America. I don't know if it's a majority or not, but a significant number of people seem to be like basically ready to go, fuck you, establishment. And so from my point of view, it seems obvious that the strongest anti-establishment candidate will win. And if the Democrats don't put up their anti-establishment candidate, then the only anti-establishment candidate to vote for will be Trump. Because in people's eyes, he seems to be anti-establishment. Even though he's a fucking billionaire, he's part of the establishment. He fucking, he's one of the people who bribed politicians. He, he is establishment. He's just a different part of it. I can't believe people fall for Donald Trump. I, I can say part of me understands it because some of the stuff he says appeals to people and they, they sort of pick out the stuff that they want to be true. Um, like, for example, uh, you know, People seem to think that Trump will be really sort of tough with the whole ISIS and terrorism thing. Yeah, Trump will be tough with, with, with it, all right. Um, take together the body of things that Trump has said. Um, he had a Muslim woman who said, I come in peace on a t-shirt, kicked out of one of his rallies. Okay, we don't want you here, they said to her. Uh, another person, I think it was a Black Lives Matter um, uh, heckler, got beaten up at a Trump rally, and Trump said he deserved it. Um, then we've got Trump saying that all Muslims should be temporarily banned from coming to America from any part of the world until we figure out what's going on, whatever the fuck that is supposed to mean. And then you have Trump saying that he'll be so strong on ISIS, he'll be tough on ISIS. Boy, you won't believe how strong I'll be on ISIS, what we do about ISIS. You won't believe what I'll do. I'll be so strong. Now, to me, all that stuff added together is code for, I will fucking nuke Syria if I'm president. I'm going to teach the world who's the fucking boss. It's the USA. We will fucking lead, and not by example, but by force. You can call me a fear monger if you like. I'm afraid. I'm afraid of a Trump presidency, and I don't mind saying so. There's no fucking shame in it, all right? Trump is not suitable to be president of the United States. Anybody who thinks so is living in a fucking fantasy land. If you care about real things, yeah? Peace on Earth. Not necessarily in the hippie sense of the world, but, you know, in the lack of fucking perpetual war. You can't vote for Donald Trump. Trump can't be trusted not only with nuclear weapons, but with the, our foreign policy in general. He's a fucking buffoon. He has no depth of understanding of the complexity of international issues. I have more of an understanding from what I can tell than Trump does because he doesn't actually say anything of substance. <sighs> it's so frustrating. Now, again, I want to reiterate, if it's Trump versus Hillary, Hillary is not going to win. Not just because what I said before about Trump pulling in independent voters, but let's talk about the debates now for a second. Trump gave money to Hillary. He'll be able to say all the same things uh, Bernie's been saying about the corruption of politics, and he'll be able to stay as, as a participant from the other side, the side that was doing the corrupting, which is itself corrupt as well, but people will overlook at that because they're seeing the people taking the bribes as being more corrupt. But he's going to be able to point to Hillary. He's never going to shut up about that. He's never going to shut up about the emails. Like Bernie has been quite gracious about it and going, look, let's talk about stuff that actually matters to the American people and not stuff that matters to the media, which I agree with. You know, I mean, whether Hillary has a case to answer for the emails or not, I don't really know. I'm not really well read about that subject. But I will tell you this. I don't think people really need to vote on that issue. I think people need to vote on what's going to happen with the future. Climate change, education, ending the drug war health care. This shit matters, man. 
And it's not safe in the hands of Donald Trump. None of us are safe in the hands of Donald Trump. I was just saying to my roommate the other day that don't think that just because you're British and we've been friends for hundreds of years means that you'll be safe if Donald Trump is president. The whole world is in fucking danger if Donald Trump is president. Because it, just, just say that my nightmare fucking is true and he actually decides to nuke fucking Raqqa or someplace else in Syria to teach them a lesson, to bring them to heal, to force them to surrender. Do you think they're actually going to surrender? More to the point, do you think the rest of the world will let the USA drop a nuke and get away with it uh, unscathed without any sort of comeback? I'm not necessarily saying that we're going to face a nuclear war if that happened, but A, don't be surprised, and B, even if we didn't, we would be an international pariah and we would deserve to be. So, yeah, I'm afraid of Donald Trump being president. I don't want Hillary Clinton to be president. I think Hillary Clinton is up for auction. She's available to the highest bidder. I think her spoken positions on subjects are blatantly malleable to whatever she perceives the political wind direction to be. And I don't really trust her in terms of keeping America safe because I think that Hillary had designs in 2008 of going to war with Iran. And now that we've got the... Uh, treaty with Iran as far as the nuclear deal is concerned, and that shouldn't really be an issue anymore. I'm not really sure what's in store, but I, I, I do worry that Hillary would want to make a mark as the first woman president and uh, not be seen to be unwilling to use force and things like that. So <clears throat> I've always had worries about Hillary as president from that point of view, but that would be the case almost no matter who was the first woman president. So to be fair to Hillary, it's not necessarily personal. <clears throat> Because when Margaret Thatcher was prime minister in the UK, uh, they had the Falklands War, which sort of dispelled any notion that a woman wouldn't uh, wouldn't use force. Um, and also uh, in Israel, Golda Meir was president uh, during some pretty tough times. Not president, prime minister, sorry. Uh, during some pretty tough times. So it's not as if uh, we don't know that women can be tough in office. Uh, but we haven't had that experience in the presidency in the USA. And I think that the first woman president would almost be under overt pressure to do something to show she was tough. Anyway, I'm digressing. Last but not least, I want to talk about Bernie. Um, Bernie Sanders is, his, his life achievements, his, what he's done with his political career and his activism throughout his life, to me, proves that he's a genuine guy. It proves that he really gave a fuck and still gives a fuck and wants us to give a fuck about the future of our country. And um, I honestly think that if Bernie does get elected president, he will lead from the front. I think he will, uh, when he talks about a political revolution, you know, uh, if, if, if citizens try to do mass demonstrations to, uh, you know, use their right to protest, um, the police have a tendency to come down on that pretty hard. I have a suspicion that Bernie will lead from the front as president and uh, will go around the country making speeches, rallying the people to petition their congressmen and senators to force them into action. Because if the senators and congressmen hear from enough people, they really don't have an excuse for ignoring it. It doesn't matter who's paying for your campaign. If, if you're a congressman or a congresswoman and you get 300, 400, 500,000 letters from your constituents, um, you know, you're going to have to act. And I think Bernie will lead from the front. And, and this political revolution that he's talking about is up to us to participate in. I wish I was there so I could do it. But at the same time, uh, I think Bernie will try to make it happen. I don't think he's just going to get elected, sit in the Oval Office and, and say, right, well, the revolution is up to you. Here I am. Bring it to me. No, no, no. I think Bernie's going to go out and, and bring it to Congress. I think he's going to lead from the front. So... <clears throat> I sure hope that's the case anyways. And I think in debates, Trump won't have anywhere near as much on Bernie as he has on Hillary. And Bernie Sanders is vastly more intellectually capable of uh, talking about policy than Trump is. He will make Trump look like the buffoon that I think Trump is. So we need to get Bernie through to the general election. If it's Trump versus Hillary, we're fucked. Now, some people seem to be thinking that it's okay to vote for Trump because, you know, it will be interesting if we have Trump for president. Interesting? This is 
fucking reality, folks. This is not television. Yeah? This is not a fantasy. This is fucking reality. You don't elect someone president because he would make a funny president. That's ridiculous. I just... I can't even. I can't even. Please don't vote for fucking Trump, right? If you have to vote for a Republican because you are one, then vote for John Kasich. At least he's at least he's not a dick, right? At least he's not a dick. I don't know. Rubio is a complete fucking puppet. Cruz is a more dangerous kind of puppet because he has even fewer masters uh, who, uh, you know, it's just, oh, oh my goodness. And Hillary. Hillary has people lined up owing her, her, with her already owing favors. Come on, folks. We can't go there. We need Bernie. Bernie's the only one who makes sense. Even if we can only get a quarter of Bernie's agenda through, that'll still be more than twice as much as any other candidate could accomplish. And with that, with that I think I will end this video. It's gone on way too long already. I want to thank you if you stuck it out for this length of time. Let's have a vigorous discussion in the comment section. How can we keep Trump out? No Trump. Down with Trump. Hillary's not the answer, that much I'm sure of. Thanks for watching. Until next time, may all your ups and downs be ups.